You're watching this video probably because your modified adjusted gross income is at least $153,000 as a single person or a head of household, or your income is at least $228,000 as a married couple. The common misconception about the Roth IRA is that you can't put money into the Roth IRA if you make that much money. You just simply can't directly contribute to the Roth IRA. You have to do what's called a backdoor Roth IRA conversions. Now, I'm releasing this video in January 2023, so you're either working on the 2022 backdoor Roth IRA or trying to figure out if you should do the backdoor Roth IRA for 2023. I'm also going to go over the pro rata rule for the backdoor Roth IRA if you have any pre-tax money or a balance in your traditional IRA. I know the backdoor Roth IRA process can be complicated, so I'll try to simplify my explanation as much as possible. If you're not sure how much money you'll make in 2023, whether it's over the $153,000 or $228,000 threshold, and it's okay to wait until January 2024 to make the contribution or the conversion. And when I switched jobs one year, I had to wait until the end of the year to figure out if I should make a contribution or a backdoor Roth IRA conversion. Because believe it or not, if you end up making more money by the end of the year, it's a good problem to have, but it is difficult to deal with your broker or brokerage company to take out the contribution and do a conversion instead. Trust me, I've done it with Vanguard in the past and it was not fun at all holding on the phone for over four hours. And here's the chart I want to show you from Charles Schwab to reference the Roth IRA income limits. If your modified adjusted gross income is less than $138,000 as a single person or under $218,000 as a married couple filing taxes jointly, you can contribute directly to your Roth IRA, but the phase out begins after those income limits. On the far right side of this table shows you how much you can directly contribute to your Roth IRA if you're in the phase out range. And again, if you're not sure what your income is going to be in 2023, make sure to speak to your CPA to find out if this makes sense to you and make sure that you're doing it correctly. So the first thing you need to know is that the 2023 Roth IRA contribution limit is 6,500. So the maximum you can do a backdoor Roth IRA is also 6,500 each year. And if you're over the age of 50, then you have the catch up contribution of $1,000. So that's a total of 7,500 for the year 2023. The first step is to have two accounts, a traditional IRA and a Roth IRA with a broker. My wife has Fidelity and I have Chase Private Client. The key is to have both traditional IRA and the Roth IRA with the same broker to make the backdoor Roth IRA happen. If you have Fidelity, then both, uh, open both accounts with Fidelity. And if you have Schwab, then have both accounts with Schwab. The next step is I'm going to contribute directly to my traditional IRA. And there are no income limits to contributing to my traditional IRA like the Roth IRA does. Keep in mind the contribution limit is still the same at 6,500 because I get paid bi-weekly. I've scheduled to do an automatic contribution from my checking account in the amount of $250. So every two weeks for $250 will get me to 6,500 by the end of 2023. Some people just do a lump sum contrib uh, contribution in the amount of 6,500 at the beginning of the year. Either way works, it's entirely up to how you want to do it. And the next step is to convert 6,500 from my traditional IRA to my Roth IRA. You can do it two ways. One is to convert your 6,500 to a Roth IRA in a lump sum or make a conversion every time you make a contribution to your traditional IRA. It's completely up to you. And I know Fidelity, Schwab, and Vanguard will allow you to do it by just making a transfer from traditional IRA to a Roth IRA. What you cannot do is make automatic conversions. And I try to do it with every broker and they all said I have to manually convert them. So to keep things, things simple, I decided just to make one lump sum conversion in January of every year. And before I go any further, don't forget to get my financial independence resources, including all of these spreadsheets for absolutely free by visiting firesidechat.com slash contact. You can also check out the firesidechat shop if you're looking to start your own YouTube channel. And I have all of my books and equipment at firesidechat.com slash shopping. So let me pull up this iPad here. And by keeping things simple, I keep that 6,500 
in cash instead of investing it in my traditional IRA. You also can do what's called an in-kind conversion if you have the same index fund, ETF, or something else in both your traditional IRA and your Roth IRA. So for example, let's say you had an S&P 500 index fund in your traditional IRA and your Roth IRA. You could do what's called an in-kind asset conversion from the S&P 500 index fund in your traditional IRA to the S&P 500 index fund in your Roth IRA. Again, I like to keep things simple, so I just keep what I contribute to the traditional IRA in the money market account. Once the cash is settled in my traditional IRA, then I make the conversion to the money market account in my Roth IRA. Now, you may see a warning or caution screen saying that a conversion is a taxable event, but that's not the case as long as the pro rata rule doesn't apply, which I will explain in the next chapter of this video. Let me explain why it's not a taxable event. The government can't tax your retirement savings twice. What you contributed to the traditional IRA from your bank account is already taxed by the government. Since you already make too much money, the contribution you make to the traditional IRA is considered a non-deductible contribution. You need to make sure during the tax season, you annotate what your contribution uh, that your contribution to the traditional IRA was non-deductible on Form 8606. You'll also get an IRS Form 1099-R from the broker that you distributed 6,500 from the traditional IRA. And Form 8606 will offset from the 1099-R so you don't pay any taxes on the conversion. However, if you have pre-tax money in your traditional IRA, It'll trigger the pro rata rule and it's such a dumb process to have, but you'll need to hear this. I know this process is complicated, so if you need help with your personal finances like creating a budget or savings plan to achieve your financial independence, you can schedule a free one-on-one 20-minute -on -one financial coaching session by visiting fivesetchat.com slash coaching. And I'll be honest with you that this is such a silly process because essentially that income limit doesn't matter or doesn't mean anything for the Roth IRA. The only difference is that if you're under the income limit, you can't directly contribute to your Roth IRA and you get to make a withdrawal whenever you want. But if you're over the income limit, the backdoor Roth IRA is considered a conversion. So you can't access any of your 6,500 conversion for five years. So every year you make the backdoor Roth IRA conversion, you'll have to wait five years to make the withdrawal. I can withdraw my 2023 Roth IRA conversion in January 2028. The only exceptions to this requirement are if you're 59 and a half or older and have owned your Roth IRA for at least five years, or if you become disabled or pass away. And one more rule you should fully understand is the pro rata tax rule for the backdoor Roth IRA. And the, this rule applies when someone like me has pre-tax and after-tax money in a traditional IRA. So when I'm doing a conversion from my traditional IRA that has both pre-tax and after-tax contributions, I'm not gonna be able to choose to convert only the after-tax portion during a conversion. So the pro rata rule is what helps me decide on the ratio that should be used in determining how much of the conversion is pre-tax versus after-tax. And this is sort of a complicated process, so bear with me here. The, rule, uh, the pro rata rule is the main reason why I keep my after-tax contribution in cash so I can separate it from the rest of my pre-tax contribution. I really wish the brokers could keep them separate, but we have to do all the work ourselves. For example, if the balance of my traditional IRA was $93,500 in pre-tax dollars by December 31st, 2022, and I make an after-tax contribution also known as a non-deductible tra uh, traditional IRA contribution of 6,500, which would bring my total traditional IRA account balance to $100,000, right? And this is where the, where the, uh, the pro, uh, pro rata rule kicks in. 93,500 divided by $100,000 is 93.5%, and 6,500 is the other 6.5%. So in this case, only 6.5% of the 6,500 Roth conversion will be considered tax-free and 93.5% of the 6,500 would actually be taxable to me. One popular way people do to avoid pro rata is to move the pre-tax portion of their traditional IRA to an employer-sponsored retirement account like the 401k or 403b. I know this pro rata rule seems like double taxation, but technically it's not. 
and you still keep your after-tax dollars in your traditional IRA, but you're only able to convert a portion based on the pro rata split. So if my account balance remains at 93,500, I'm converting 6.5% of my after-tax dollars yearly. And if I converted $50,000 out of the $100,000, then I would uh, still convert half of my after-tax dollars. And I really hope that Congress makes some changes to this pro rata rule in the future because it is extremely complicated and unnecessary. The easiest way to make the backdoor Roth IRA happen is to keep a $0 balance in your traditional IRA so you don't need to worry about triggering the pro rata rule. And if you want to know more about how to invest in your Roth IRA for your early retirement, be sure to check out these two videos. So that's it. I appreciate you watching my video. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you in the next video. Have a good one.